and welcome back to episode three of the Archie's Omnibus. I'm still waiting for uh, the BBC to come and slam me for calling it the Archie's Omnibus, but I think I'll get away with it. Um, <clears throat> since um, I last saw you, uh, anyone who follows rail stuff on Instagram might have seen that I've done uh, a little bit of painting of the underneath of where the uh, arches will sit at the back um, and the ballast has dried so I did a little bit of chipping away the the, the, the stuff that didn't look so so good um, so I think that's getting there that'll be ready for for a coat of uh, weathering before too long um, but on the subject of of painting and things like that uh, obviously the arches themselves uh, need some work um, and really before I can add any of the details in like the doors and the windows and things like that uh, I, I really need to get cracking with this and also the fact that um, <clears throat> the plan is to have a track running across the the top of the um, arches as well it means that I kind of need to prepare for that as well the other thing that I have mentioned previously as well is that um, I want to put some lighting inside um, so I've got some of uh, uh, some of these LEDs um, these are warm white uh, LEDs and the ones that I use uh, run on anything between 9 and 12 volts um, so they've got built in capacitors, resistors, whatever it is I'm not technically minded on that stuff uh, but this is the reason why I get ones that work directly off of 9 to 12 volts um, so that I don't have to worry about fitting any other bits and pieces We'll look at those later on, but just so you know, you can buy a pack of 10 of those in warm white for £7.95 on rail-stuff.com. So uh, grab yourself some of those. I also do five packs of uh, red, orange, yellow, green and blue. Um, feel like I've missed one, but I think that's it. Uh, the reason I mentioned the lighting as well <coughs> is that my next step is to uh, paint across the... Uh, the, the top so I want to add a just a, a dark grey surface um, that will sit underneath the ballast and the, and the rails um, and at the same time whilst I mix up a, a, a dark grey uh, I should probably paint the insides of the front um, reason being that if I'm using lights then you ideally want to paint the inside uh, black or use some black plastic cards on the inside to stop any any light from leaking out because that's where you see the gaps in the joins and things like that and it just looks awful so um, I, I will just seeing as I'm mixing up some some dark grey anyway uh, I will just use that on the inside uh, of the frontages um, and probably the inside of the, the, the top to the bottom of the top if that makes sense because otherwise we might get some light leaking out through the rail and that would look very strange so uh, yes we'll do that um, I'm not going to go super thick on this because I am conscious of the fact that this is quite thin um, laser cut wood and therefore it could potentially get um, uh, you know, warped uh, if, if there's too much moisture getting into it um, but I am just going to use a, a, a very basic uh, acrylic paint um, so just put some black in there and we'll go for some white yeah, for those of you that don't know the two constituent parts of grey there's your education for this uh, episode um, and then I need to give it a mix up um, and basically try and create the, the right grey that I want um, for that and then I'll start painting it. Nothing more exciting than that. Uh, what I will say though is I have given the entirety of the arches inside, out, front and back uh, a coat of MIG Ammo One Shot Primer. There we go, help if I hold it in front of the camera. Uh, in transparent, so I just did that with, uh, with the airbrush. So just giving that a quick once over. Um, I, I, I think that the wood will take the, the the paint just fine straight off the bat but um, no harm in just running a little bit of uh, primer over it uh, as well just to make sure um, so that's what I've done um, so that's that's pretty much dry 
and it means that I'm ready to go. So I'm going to paint across the tops and on the insides, but I do need to mark up the brick walls on, uh, or mask up, sorry, the brick walls on the top, uh, just to make sure I don't go and ruin those ahead of painting them properly. So. So I'm back filming and it's very much a different day because in between that one and this one uh, I've been up to Scotland for Model Rail Scotland which was a great trip if you've never been and you get a chance then do so. It's a fantastic show um, and it was great to meet so many more of you um, there in, in Glasgow. Um, <clears throat> whilst I was there I did a little bit of shopping. Shh, don't, don't, don't tell anyone. Um, by anyone you know who not to tell um, but uh, oh, when I was there I was actually next door to West Hill Wagon Works and I've always been meaning to uh, have a look at some of the stuff that they've got that, that might suit this um, so I did um, so the first thing I picked up was one of these a small locomotive carriage uh, inspection platform um, so I don't know if you can see that picture particularly well uh, there's a lot of light here um, but a couple of little uh, steps and uh, uh, inspection platform <clears throat> there um, I wanted some line side uh, electrical boxes as well uh, always important and I think a couple of those will go in here quite nicely so there they are uh, on their on their 3d printed sprue if that's what you call them in the 3d printing world um, and then I got a couple of packs of these uh, yellow or silver railings so the, the the lengths and then the ends to finish it off so I'll put some of those around the outside of the the front of the loco shed just to add a bit of detail so pick those up um, and uh, you know I'm sure you know how to find West Hill Wagon Works uh, online if you need anything like that your yourself so where are we at now next job is to paint this and yes I am putting it off um, because I, I get fearful of painting uh, and of messing it up and of choosing the right colors and all of that kind of stuff um, so I need to have a think about that the other thing that that is bothering me now is the colour of this. Uh, somebody in, in the comments from when I actually did uh, the video on, on building that unit suggested um, that actually it should be stone rather than brick. And I think they're right. Um, I don't know whether to now take the time to repaint this in stone, though it's difficult because I've built it all, um, or whether to just leave it as it is and uh, and accept the criticism for it being for it being the wrong colour. I think I'm leaning more towards the second option, um, just because at this stage it would be very difficult to repaint it, um, and I quite like the look of it so. I think I'll go with that, um, but I am thinking for the arches that they probably need to be a, a, a darker sort of um, bluey grey, um, heavily weathered kind of um, kind of colour. So I'm going to need to find some good examples of that. So I'm going to have a look online 
uh, for some good examples and then I need to take a mixture of some of the, the paints that I've got to, to make something up so I've got some uh, matte black there I've got some dark blue in the uh, ammo rail center set that might sort of help um, I feel like I'm probably going to need to add a bit of uh, a, a sort of brownie color to it as well um, but then I'm sort of a bit lost so you know maybe what I need to do is is, is kind of start with those and see how I get on from there um, rather than overthinking it too much I think that's part of the problem is I'm overthinking it and if I created something that was um, black maybe I do need to add a little white in there just to stop it from being too too dark <clears throat> so create a, a grey and then add a bit of blue and dark earth into it and kind of create a, a dirty grey blue colour uh, and maybe I'll just do that and, and put it on and see what happens maybe So since the last bit was recorded, quite a bit of time has moved on. Um, it's been pretty busy around here with different shows and events, um, so it has taken some time to make some progress. But what you can see is that I have now completed the base coat paint uh, on the arches. Um, originally, the paint sort of came out this kind of colour, which I don't know how much you can see the, the difference on, on the camera, but this was maybe a little bit bright, so I darkened it down for the second coat. Now we don't need to worry about the back too much because that's all going to be hidden. Um, and what I did in the end was I, I got myself some uh, little dropper bottles, empty ones, uh, and uh, played around with mixing up my own uh, colour for it, which uh, was made up of blue, black and a little bit of brown as well uh, from the ammo range. Um, so I'll now keep that for, for further work on that. You can also see that the, the top is sort of prepared ready for putting track on and it really kind of gets us to the next question which is do we go with some track and ballast across the top of this first or do we start to weather it down and uh, add a mortar wash and things like that first? Uh, and I'm a little bit torn on that question, to be honest with you. Uh, what I do know is that um, I probably want to put a coat of uh, matte varnish over the top of the painting that I've done already um, before I try to add a, a mortar wash. What I'm thinking at the moment is uh, a quick spray of the Ammo Ultra Matte Lucky Varnish. I still don't know why they call it Lucky Varnish, but I suppose why not? Um, and then maybe looking at like a, a, a dust uh, colour, um, heavily thinned down as a wash over the top, and the old wipe it off kind of approach. I also like using the foam brushes, which I've got some. Uh, down there next to me, um, so you know that's one possibility. But I'm I'm torn on whether I lay the track and the ballast across the top first, or 
whether I do the weathering first. So I'm going to do some thinking. So I made my decision uh, and I'm going to get the track down first, um, get that in position and then kind of move move on from there. Um, of course that, that also means getting the ballast down as well. Um, so that's what I'm going to work on right now. Um, so I've cut the length of track. This by the way is just old scrap track. I think it's I think it's Pico, uh, if I remember rightly. Yes, it is Pico, Pico Streamline. Um, <clears throat> it's old, uh, I've never used it, it will never be used. I literally just bought this um, off a second hand store to show uh, for using on dioramas. I've trimmed it down to size, I've left it pretty scrappy and dirty, because um, we're gonna dirty it up with the, the ballast anyway. Um, so we don't need to worry about it too much. Now what I am going to do is uh, I'm just going to use a bit of PVA. Um, obviously I wouldn't normally just stick track down with PVA. I'd normally use something a little bit more <coughs> sturdy than that. But again this isn't being used to actually run any rolling stock on or uh, any locos so it doesn't really matter. Um, and as long as it holds it in place until I do the ballasting, then once the ballast is there with all of that glue and everything like that, it's all going to hold in place like this stuff has done uh, anyway. So I'm not hugely fussed um, about how I fix it down, just want to fix it down um, so that it's in place. So I'm going to paste some PVA on and then stick it down and weight it down. Um, and that will probably be about as far as I can go on this video, which means that next time around we'll be looking at uh, painting and weathering the arches, adding some of the finishing touches like the windows and doors to them as well. And the other thing that I need to be working on is uh, adding some lighting to the inside of those. Now, I've got a bunch here of 9 to 12 volt um, uh, warm white LEDs. Uh, I sell these at uh, rail-stuff.com by the way um, and I'm going to fit one here and one about here so that the, the two you know, frontage gaps have some light coming out of them. Um, I then found in an old box some of these, uh, some really basic um, like floodlight, uh, yard light type things. So I'm gonna fit those as well. So in the next video, we can expect to be starting some electrical work um, and I'll show you how I'll power those up and control them as well. So um, it should be quite interesting. Uh, but for this time, uh, I'm going to lay the track on there, add some ballast, and then we're done. thing that I was fearing might be happening. Um, I was worried about putting all that moisture on top and I don't know if you can see but the sides are kind of bowing in so I'm just trying to pull them back out um, <clears throat> but that's not looking great to be honest. So I'm going to need to find something to wedge in there as it dries, that's not big enough. Uh, so yeah, this is exactly what I was fearing might happen. Um, and stupid me, I didn't come up with a contingency plan. So I guess we're going to have to do that pretty quickly now. But in case you haven't seen the issue, the sides are bowing in and probably uh, I'm sure there's something else I should have done so I've just had to be a bit more brutal with bending it back into shape um, and it's okay I, I, <clears throat> it's not 
ideal at the moment and the back is still sloped in quite a bit it'll be interesting to see what the front does as it dries um, but I think the the main thing is that actually now I think about it once it dries might be the better opportunity to then reshape it anyway so I've just wedged a couple of jars in there to give it some support and I think once it's dried <coughs> so part of it is a is a weight thing it is a lot heavier now it's got track plus ballast plus uh, all the all the glue on top as, as well um, but that's that's okay because it will get lighter as the glue dries out so you know what I maybe need to do is just come back to that once it's dried out it shouldn't take too long because it is reasonably warm in here at the moment um, I've got a little bit of patch of ballast just to repair in here that I accidentally chipped out so Add that back in there. Uh, this is just IPA in uh, a bottle. So what I did was I just went on Amazon and I got a litre bottle of IPA for, I don't know, it was about six or seven quid, I think. Um, and then I got a pack of two little pump action bottles for, I think they were about four quid for the two. So for about 10 or 11 pounds, I've got myself uh, a, a stash of IPA and some nice pump action bottles to, to use it in, which is great for laying ballast. Um, for putting that down first before you put the glue and it's also good for uh, general cleaning and um, all kinds of stuff that you might do uh, around a layout so you know everyone should have some IPA everyone should have some PVA um, you know they're the sort of two basic go-to's anyway we're gonna leave it there for now um, so we've got a bit of color on the arches now um, we've got some track and some ballast on there and now we play a nervous waiting game to see whether it all holds and stays upright and, uh, uh, and whether it all works for the future. But that's where we're at. Um, so join us on the next video when hopefully everything's still intact and we'll start some weathering and lighting. Um, and um, then we are finally making some proper progress. If I slot this back in place, um, then you can see basically where we're up to so thanks for watching once again um, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, I know it's that annoying thing that people say on YouTube but uh, it really does help um, people that are producing content on YouTube uh, and of course don't forget to shop at rail-stuff.com uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time